statements put together create compound statements, inequalities together create compound inequalities. So when we put together compound statements, there is the word or and and between them. So this problem is uh, essentially it's about the words and and or because we have identical problems, the only difference is the word and and or. Okay. First, we solve each linear inequality. So let's, let's go for this one. That is a trick I want to show you. Now let me show you first what I would do. When it comes to negative signs and inequalities, I'm a bit of a coward. I like to avoid the issue. So what I'm going to do is I say, well, let's just add x to both sides. I don't mind solving for it on the right-hand side. So if we add x to both sides, we get 2 is less than equal than 6 6 plus x or x plus 6 and then as we said we're going to solve for x here x is greater than equal than negative 4. One disadvantage is that if x is on the right hand side you have to be able to look at it from the point of view of the variable x is now on the bigger part of the inequality side so it's greater than or equal to negative 4. Now this this is this is what I would do the official method would be subtract 2, then you get negative x is less than or equal than 4, and now divide or multiply both sides by negative 1, and then you get x here, negative 4 here, and the inequality sign must flip. If you look at this, adding it to the other side is just a slow way of multiplying by negative 1, but I find it delightfully compromise-free. There's basically decisions that you avoid having to make. So either way, this inequality translates to a simpler inequality that x has to be greater than or equal than negative 4. Now we're going to do the same thing here. Again, you can just add 4x to both sides, so I'll do it both ways. All right, so here is the coward's way out. Let's just add 4x to both sides. Then we get 1 on the left-hand side and negative 19 plus 4x or 4x minus 19 on the right-hand side. And now we're going to solve for x in the familiar way, but from the right hand side. So add 19 divided by 4. Add 19 will give us 20 is less than 4x and then divide by 4. After a while, when it's this simple, you don't even have to write this, this stuff. So we divide by 4, 5 is less than x. So x has to be greater than 5. This is more familiar, but it's the same connection. What is the other way? So the other way is just go and solve it for the left hand side. We subtract one. I just don't like swimming in the negative signs like this. So minus 4x is less than minus 20. And then we divide by negative 4. So x and 5. But now we have to flip the inequality sign. It is less steps. And it looks like it's less steps. But I used to feel very uncomfortable with, with this. It goes away after a while, by the way, but there's always a way out. Going back, the first inequality translated into x is greater than or equal to negative 4, and the second one that x is greater than 5. And this is identical, only the word and between them. So let's just draw a picture of these two sets. One of them, x is greater than or equal to negative 4, looks like that. And the other one is strictly greater than 5. So let's solve this one. x is greater than or equal to, to negative 4 or x is greater than 5. Now, when is an OR statement true? It's just one truth is enough. So if you scan from left to right, negative 4 will already work. Because negative 4, it, this starts working. And for, forever, this works. So this compound inequality can be simplified into x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And if you think about it, if x is greater x, if x is greater than or equal to negative 4, negative 4 and on, this will always be true. So this is, this is the answer for, as an interval, it's x has to be greater. So negative 4, infinity. And because equality is allowed, we use the bracket here. Okay. What if the same compound inequality, but the word in between is not or, but and? So first of all, we're going to look at the same picture. But now we're looking for different stuff. What are we looking for? We're looking for x is greater than or equal than minus 4 and greater than 5. So that means, the word and means that 
in order for it to be true, both parts have to be true. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4 and greater than 5. That is the same as belonging into both sets graph. And that is the same thing that if you are a number on the x-axis and you look up, you should see both lines above you, right? If you look up here, nothing. If you look up here, it's just the blue, but here you see both. So this is what it looks like visually that it's in both sets. So x is definitely greater than 5, and then let's think about 5. If x is exactly 5, then this is not true, and therefore it's not, not in the set. So this one is x is greater than 5, or in interval notation from 5 to infinity open parenthesis. Problem is over, you can stop the video as usual. Okay, here is the same problem, a little bit cleaned up. So after we solve the linear inequalities, it boils down to these very simple ones. These are the two simple inequalities graphed, and when they are put together with the word or, we get x is greater than or equal to negative 4, and then the word is and, then we get x is greater than 5. Now notice that the solutions were just the, just the components. So if you take the or, then you pick up just this statement alone. And if, if you take uh, the word and, then, then it's the other one. And so I would like to uh, say that this is not that strange because we have kind of sort of seen this. Suppose we have a set B that is a subset of A. This is what it look, looks like. Everything that's in B automatically is in A. So what do we think the union of A and B is? Basically, we would have to put everything from A and everything from B into a same set, but B brings nothing new to the table, so A is good enough for the union, right? What about the intersection? In case of the intersection, now we want we want to list elements that are in both, and that means they are also in B. And if they are in B, then automatically in A, so now the intersection is the other set. If you have two sets, and one of them is a subset of the other, then when you take the union of the two, that's the bigger set, and when you take the intersection of the two, that's the smaller set. And that's exactly what happened. Um, the blue set contains the orange set, right? So the orange set is a subset of the blue set, and therefore when we take the union, which is which is what we did here, right? Uh, when we take the union, we get the bigger set, and when we take the intersection of them, we get the smaller set. So we just wanted to make that connection. Um, I'm sure some of you recognized it. Thank you for watching.